Welcome back, Nerd Squad, to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host, Johnny Rogers, and if you happen to be new here, we put out daily content on all things nerdy, so if you're down with that, then tap subscribe to see more. Also, make sure you stay all the way to the end of this video because you won't believe our number one spot, and we may just have some behind the scenes content, depending on how much I mess up in this video. Plus, leave us a comment down below with what your favorite comic book is, and while you ponder that, let's jump right into today's list, the top 10 comic book lawsuits you won't believe. In at number 10, Spawn. First thing, when it comes to lawsuits you won't believe, we have to start with Spawn creator Todd McFarlane suing an ex-employee because he claimed to be the inspiration for the character. Yeah, that happened. In the early 1990s, Todd had hit the jackpot with his creation of the comic book character Al Simmons, whose tragic story would lead him to becoming Spawn. When the comic book became successful, a former employee who, you guessed it, has the name Al Simmons, wrote a book called The Art of Being Spawn. In the book, Simmons suggests more than once that the character was based on his own life and was used as the inspiration. According to a lawsuit filed in an Arizona federal court, Todd sued Simmons for violating the terms of his employment pact, which breached his duty of loyalty. McFarlane did ask to use the man's name for the character, but his central attributes had nothing to do with his former employee. The main reason for this bizarre lawsuit was that Todd did not want someone else mooching off the comic book that he had created. In at number 9, Liefeld Gets Robbed. Rob Liefeld Liefeld is best known as the creator of Deadpool, Cable, Youngblood, and X-Force, plus a version of Captain America. Back in 1990, he had co-founded an independent comic book company with six other former comic book artists who had worked for Marvel. His former partners at Image Comics Incorporated had refused to pay Rob the money that he was owed from the sales of his titles that were distributed through Image Comics. As a result, he filed a lawsuit for $1 million, and this was way back in 1996, so man oh man, that was a lot of money. Now he's found himself in the comic book courtroom yet again calling out Marvel for its shady practices with his Deadpool character rights. In a series of strange tweets, he even tagged Marvel and Robert Iger, the current CEO of Disney. In the tweet, Rob said, had a good long talk with my attorney, time to hold some feet to the fire for some shady practices over at Marvel. Tagged at Marvel. Good times to come, tagged at Robert Iger. Yikes, we're guessing that after the success of the Deadpool movie, he did not get a big enough check in the mail. It's, I'm a grown And nobody man. does childlike innocence like you, Fred. Nobody. I need you almost as much as you need me. I don't need you at all. You need me to untie you once we're done. In at number eight, Hell's Angels. Yep, you got that right. Even the Hell's Angels have sued people in the past. The ultra famous biker club gang brought Marvel Comics to court in 1992 under intellectual property theft. Marvel had just named a comic book after one of their newest additions to the team called Hell's Angel. Now, you may be asking, wait, how can a biker gang sue people? Well, that's where their lawyer, Mr. Clapp, comes in, and it's kind of genius. You see, in 1970, Clapp formed the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Corporation, which was a non profit established to protect the club's intellectual property. Marvel was accused of using the club's name to get a free ride due to their highly recognizable and powerfully evocative name for the female character that debuted in July of 1992. Marvel not wanting to mess around with the mob, they changed the character's name to Dark Angel and then came to the agreement that they would donate $35,000 to a children's charity. Somehow it makes Hell's Angels the nice guys here? I guess. In at number 7, No More Wonder Man. During the birth of the character Superman, DC Comics wasted almost no time following its release to start handing out lawsuits. They had seen other comic books blatantly ripping each other off in the past and sought to protect their greatest asset to date. That's why in 1939, DC sent an injunction to stop Brun's publications from ever putting out its Wonder Man title. The legend himself, Will Eisner, had drawn the character and both Eisner and the company tried to argue that Wonder Man came before Superman, although the courts, for whatever reason, and decided to go with DC giving life to Superman and just like that Wonder Man was suddenly no more. This was an important win for DC though as it gave them a legally binding case when it came to protecting their property and encouraged them to file more lawsuits in the future. <coughs> Todd Fawcett. In at number 6, Stand for Spider-Man. This one is a biggie for sure. Back in 2002 the first big box office Spider-Man movie was released and destroyed box office numbers that year grossing more than 400 million dollars in the United States alone. However at the time 
time, Stan Lee said that he hadn't seen a penny of that money. Knowing that Marvel was planning on using some of his other creations for box office films, Stan took a preemptive strike suing Marvel for $10 million. In the lawsuit it said, despite reaping enormous benefits from Mr. Lee's creations, defendants have refused to honor their commitments to it. It would take another three years before Marvel finally announced that they had settled all outstanding litigations with Stan, and hopefully he got every last penny. In at number 5, Batman and Bill. Bill Finger had co-created arguably one of the most iconic characters of all time. Batman turned out to not just be a hit with the fans, but became one of the most lucrative comic book characters in the last century even. Another man by the name of Bob Kane was not only taking the credit, but all of the cash as well. Kane had essentially come up with a raw outline of what Batman would look like, but it was the genius of Bill Finger that truly made the Batman into the character we know him as today. The two worked collaboratively on the character, but never split the profit in the same way. It would take nearly 75 years of lawsuits, court battles, artists, squabbles, and Bill's own family fighting for his recognition well after he had died for this all to come to a close. We're not exactly sure if there was any payouts to Bill's estate, but he's at least going to be credited now on anything that's Batman related. Good job, Bill's family. In at number 4, The Superman Battle. The OG Superman was created by writer Jerome Siegel and illustrated by Joseph Schuster, and at the time, each of them had been credited with a 50 50% stake in the royalties of the character. This was all well and good until the big dog in town DC Comics rolled up and conned the two of them into selling the character for $130. Yeah. The pair would work on and off with DC Comics until the company no longer really had work for them, and for the majority of their lives they dealt with a lot of health issues but could barely afford to live off of the money that they were making, all while DC was just raking in billions from their Superman character. The pair had attempted to sue the company, but the law at the time always sided with DC because their contract stated that DC would own the rights to Superman following anything that they had created afterwards. Sorry guys. In at number 3, Ghost Rider. This one makes me go a little crazy, legit, it's one of the silliest lawsuits I've ever heard of. After a bitter and depressing 5 year legal battle regarding a biker with a flaming skull, Marvel beat Ghost Rider creator Gary Friedrich. Gary now must stop from ever referring to himself as Ghost Rider creator Gary Friedrich. In 2002, Gary had filed a lawsuit against Marvel claiming that the rights to Ghost Rider had been his since 2001 and that by creating a film they were exploiting his creation. Marvel on the other hand argued that Gary relinquished all rights to the character by signing his checks that were made clear that all work done by him was a work for hire contract, meaning that Marvel owned the rights this entire time. Although as you know, Marvel did not stop there. They countersued Friedrich in 2010 seeking damages for loss of all income that Gary had received by selling selling Ghost Rider prints and other various merchandise while at conventions. Sorry Gary. In at number 2, Shazam. In June of 1941, National Comics had sued Fawcett for copyright infringement when it came down to their character known as Captain Marvel. Once Fawcett's Captain Marvel began outselling DC Superman, they raised the argument that the character's main powers and characteristics were far too similar to Superman's. Therefore, it infringed on its copyright and then the two would engage in a legal battle that lasted well over 12 years. The judge finally ruled that Captain Marvel was a copy of Superman, but because DC did not place a copyright logo on their comic strips, they could not file under copyright infringement. Although DC still fought tooth and nail to reclaim what they believed was theirs. With Fawcett's sales dropping in the early 1950s, the appeal to the first trial really hurt them financially. They agreed to pay out a settlement of $400,000 which would be nearly $4 million in today. DC essentially consumed all of Fawcett's characters after this and renamed Captain Marvel as Shazam. Last but not least in our number one spot, Stan Lee. Back in May of 2018, Stan Lee found himself again battling with a former company of his. This time it was POW Entertainment. Stan Lee was going all out as well seeking a one billion dollar lawsuit. Okay. I get it. Look, Brennan, here's the thing. It's the Catalina wine mixer. Okay. POW! Are you saying POW? Lee had accused the company's CEO Shane Duffy and co-founder Gil Champion of conspiring, and I quote, to fraudulently steal Lee's identity, name, image, and likeness as part of a nefarious scheme to benefit financially at his expense. This all came following Stan's devastating decline in health, and the case however was soon dismissed by the courts as they deemed the lawsuit meritless. Apparently the company and Stan were able to work out an arrangement behind the scenes and without the court involved. Rest in peace Stan Lee. And that has been the top 10 comic book lawsuits 
tunes you won't believe. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on this list. And for more videos like this one, all you gotta do is click that playlist from Top 10 Nerd. I'm Johnny Rogers saying until next time, take care. According to a lawsuit filed in Arizona, Arizona? Arizona, you ever been to Arizona? It was on a Monday that I went to Arizona.